Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad you've joined us. I always say Steve Post, Ashley's at, no, 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 you're right here right alongside here. of me. How are you? I am fabulous. It's good to be back in studio live and in color. I know, absolutely. <laughs> this is so awesome. It is so, so cool. Zoom calls have changed our world, but there is nothing like face-to-face. -face. I it's, couldn't agree more. Yeah, it really is. So, <laughs> so good to have you in studio. We've got a lot to cover here in the sprint car world. Don Kreitz Jr. is going to be our guest, so a lot to cover right there in itself. But, Ashley, the move seen around the world. I thought when Sheldon Hodenshield won up at up at, um, up at at Houston, when he drove around everybody, I said, that's the, that's the darndest thing I'll see all year long. And I know it's NASCAR, but I'm telling you, Ross Chastain at Martinsville, aye, aye, aye. Uh, yeah, that's the best way to put it. Uh, never in a million years did you think that was going to happen. Whoever would have thought in the moment, yeah. let's pull a video game move. Yeah. <laughs> And I love, and even the reaction, I saw I saw Brad Sweet, I've seen different sprint car drivers. I saw some people say they replaced Ross Chastain with Jack Hodenshield. I saw someone say they did that. Um, I just think, I just think when sports racing is good, it's good. And that was spectacular. And I hope that yields some great racing this weekend with the World Finals. You'll be in the middle of it or almost done with it when you watch this program. We're recording it before it all starts. So let's get right into it, though. Let's take a lap around the sprint car world. We're going to start in New Jersey, not a place we always start in sprint car racing. <laughs> Sprinttoberfest. This is at Bridgeport Speedway, Ashley, the kingdom of speed. Track was around since 1972, a big, big five-eighths mile track. Brutal on engines. 2019, Doug Rose bought the place. 2020, he debuted a state-of-the-art 410-mile racetrack. World of Outlaws has been there, rave reviews, and this weekend it was Sprinttoberfest. Yes, a uh, really cool deal. 410 Sprint Cars, URC Sprint Cars, and then the USAC East Coast. Uh, the USAC winner was uh, none other than Briggs Danner. Yep. Um, URC Devin Borden, uh, the daredevil, if you will. And then 410s, Friday night, the 20-lap feature for non-winners was Davey Franick. Saturday, Corey Lyson, good to see him in victory lane with 5,000. And then Sunday night, the guy's brother that we talked to last week, uh, Gio Selzy, uh, he picked up the $15,000 payday. Yeah, really, really cool. I love, I chatted with Doug Rose the year that he purchased the track, and he talked about this vision. I was up doing indoor racing in Allentown, and we were at a Chickie and Pete's. And he's yes. telling me all about, yeah, I know. He's telling me all about this, and I'm like, this guy is either a genius or he's totally lost his mind. <laughs> Doug, you're a genius because this place is really, really cool. So fun, fun stuff that is for sure. That is turn number one. Let's go to turn number two. Now, I said we're watching this. This is unfolding as the World of Outlaw World Finals is going on. But Ashley, the streak that Brad Sweet and his Casey Kane racing team deserve a little attention. Okay, 166 races without a DNF back to July 2000. You are in the maintenance business, building race car business. How impressive is that, what KKR did? That's extremely impressive. Um, it says a lot for his guys because they're going through that car every single race with a fine tooth comb, making sure there's no cracks in anything, making sure everything needs to be where it needs to be to be successful. And then even take it a step farther with your engines. That's something that, you know, yeah, you can maintenance, but you have to have full... Yeah faith in your engine builder so it really speaks miles for that whole team it does for that whole team and that team is led by eric kritzman uh kritzman that is joe mooney and andrew bowman uh eric and joe are from the state of pennsylvania mm -hmm. not a shocker there no. uh that is sprint car country <laughs> uh andrew is from ohio and so we talk so much about the drivers here and the drivers are the heroes we understand sure. this but I just thought, man, a tip of the cap to KKR, that team. I know the parts failure at Williams Grove could not have been at a worse time. I understand that. But that doesn't mean we don't highlight what they did leading up to that. Absolutely. And it takes a, a good driver to make sure he's not yep. putting his car in a situation that it doesn't need to be in. And, you know, parts failures happen. And it's just if you're able to catch them before they happen and be able to replace things. Impressive indeed. There you have it, our lap around the sprint car world. Now stay with us. When we come back, the Hall of Famer, Don Kreitz Jr., he joins us on the Hercules Tires Hotline. 
Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's get right to it because we have got a lot of distance to cover with our guest. Joining us on the Hercules Star Hotline, the Hall of Famer from the state of Pennsylvania, Don Kreitz Jr. Hello, Don. How are you? Hi, guys. Nice to be here. It is good to catch up with you. Uh, winner of the National Donnie, how do you how do you even put your arms around where you guys are at now and the journey you're on? Uh, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I don't know. Lance stepped it up here at the end of the year. If we got the cards a little better for him, or probably all, all of the above, I guess. But, uh, you know, it just this racing anymore is so close that you do a couple little things that you're not even really thinking, you, you know, you did anything. <laughs> not that you're planning on it. And, you know, it's just that, that tight. And I don't know, we just got lucky and hit the sweet spot, I guess, you know, and, uh, it's it been on a, a pretty nice, uh, you know, a pretty nice roll. Uh, so talking about that roll, $75,000 richer after the National Open at Williams Grove. Donnie, what does it mean to win that race now that Lance is the oldest uh, gentleman to win that race? Just the whole weekend with the rain out kind of splitting things up. Did that make things harder for you guys or were you ready since you won five in a row? Let's talk about that as yeah. well at Williams Grove. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was huge, and I'm usually not that bad at the track as far as uh, being nervous. But uh, that feature seemed to take so long. I don't know, and uh, you know a lot of yellows and stuff. And uh, uh, I was pretty much in panic mode. I know Cassidy was ready to get down. She was throwing up and <laughs> everything else. So you know we were uh, we were quite nervous, but. Uh, you know, Lance did a hell of a job. I, I thought he ran really hard the way the the track was, you know, probably harder than he wanted to run, but uh, you know, he knew what he he knew what he had to do and uh, the car was good. Davy and the guys did a good job and uh, you know, the the financial part of it, the money was huge for for our team, you know, it really helped us out and probably left us uh blow a little bit here you know towards the end of the year run, running these last few races but uh I, that you know that's okay everyone earned it and uh you know we we have fun when we go travel we just we don't do it very often so when we do it no matter how we run you know we have a good time don i wanted to go back uh, about seven years ago 2015 uh you start the year off being inducted into the sprint car hall of fame which is every driver's crowning moment and then as the season unfolds, you're having some concussion symptoms and you're realizing that the end of the line is near. And you guys put together this plan with you and Davey and this old guy named Lance Deweese, this whole racer to put it together. Could you ever imagine, I know you can dream and be hopeful in 2015 that it goes this well, but could you ever imagine it going this well? No, no, no. And, and I'll be honest, when Lance, Lance called me about the ride, and uh you know and we were talking about it and uh you know he said about driving the the car and stuff and that you know when he ran against me he always liked the way the car looked on the track knew that it handled well and stuff and uh you know what i thought and i said you know i told him with him driving you know it wouldn't really be it, it's not even going to be fair. You know, they probably need to start us in the back because you're going to win a lot. But, you know, I'm trying to pump them up, not be cocky like that. You know, not. I know it's not like that. But, uh, you know, things went really well in the beginning. You know, we probably had an advantage, some of the stuff we were doing over the competition. And everyone's, everyone's caught up. And, you know, um, I'm glad we were able to have a nice little run here at the end of the year and you know hopefully we can keep it going uh everyone's coming back for next year 
Davey said he'll be back as long. He said he's just hoping he makes it through the winter. He said that's the worst always is the winter. But he said if he gets through that, he said he'll be, uh, you know, he'll be at the track next year. I love the whole, I mean, we've called you the dream team for years now, and it truly is all Hall of Famers, just a huge ordeal. And then to do what you guys are doing. Donnie, you touched on it a little bit. Let's chat about it. You've added some races to the schedule post uh release of schedule in February, March there. You've added a couple here at the end, obviously Bridgeport this past weekend. And now this weekend you're in Charlotte. How did this all come about? Well, ever since Lance has been in the car, uh, Lance and uh, Cassidy and, and the crew guys, they always wanted to go to Charlotte at the end of the year. And the, the one thing, our parts store, there's a big uh, race car flea market up here always on that weekend in Carlisle. And we usually go with our parts store and set up a big display and everything. And it's normally a good day for us. So that was one reason why we didn't go. And the other, I always thought, well, one, it could, for a while they were just paying like a regular outlaw purse. And I thought they could probably pay a little more and I just wasn't supporting them on principle, <laughs> even though I thought it'd be a fun thing to do. And, you know, they, they've stepped that up. And uh, I told Lance and Cassidy before the Tuscarora, I said, if we're lucky enough to win the Tuscarora or the National Open, we'll go to Charlotte. So, uh, you know, when Lance won last Saturday, uh, we come off the track off Victory Lane and him and Cassidy are waiting for me in the trailer. They said, we're going to Charlotte now next week, right? <laughs> so I, I couldn't pretty much get out of it and you know, we scrambled around and made rooms and uh, made plans and, and stuff. So we're uh, leaving about 3 a.m. We're shooting for as long as we get everything done. We're in a mad thrash now from Bridgeport and trying to load stuff up and thinking about what we need because we're not a road team. We're, we're a shop team. Everywhere we go, we drive back home, back and forth, even if Port Royal, the three-day Tuscarora, we're two hours away from home, we still drive back and forth. Bridgeport was just, that was the same. You know, we drove back and forth every night because we just like working on the car in the shop, which I'm sure all the guys do. But so we're not travel ready, you know, ready to go on the road for three days for a week or whatever and make sure we have everything in there we need for a night, you know, not so. You know, we, it takes a little bit of work for us to make sure we have everything along we need, but uh, we'll we'll do the best we can and we'll, we'll have fun. And, and that's the thing. It's got to be it's got to be so different for you, Donnie. You guys, you you roll into Port Royal. You're the car everyone is watching. You have success there. You go back home. You same with Williams Grove and everything. You said something earlier. You said we have fun when we go travel. Um, is it a different level of pressure? Is it a different level of stress? Is it, you know, eating at restaurants and hanging out a little bit more? What is it like for, for you and the guys and the gals on the team? Well, probably the last time we really traveled was when we went to Knoxville yeah. a few years ago. And my goal was, uh, to make the show was a goal. And I only gave us about a 10% chance because, you know, you just need everything to go right. And, you know, I knew we hadn't run there naturally and everything. And uh, so, but, but we had a good time. We still talk about it. And oh, wait, I th actually, after that, I think we went to Arizona. That was last year. So that we did, and we didn't really run very well, but we had fun. We had a good time. One of the sponsors wanted to go and took care of everything. So uh, that's why we went there. It was just a fun thing to do last winter. And uh, now, going to going to Charlotte, you know, it's kind of going to be the same thing. I, I made a goal of, I'd be ecstatic if we just make the show every night. And if we don't, you know, so be it. It's, it's fine. Hopefully I can get the car. We won't have Davey and we didn't have him at Bridgeport because it's just too many days for him, you know? And, uh, so we're, we're on our own and, uh, hopefully I get the car decent enough by the last, by the last night and you know we can at least make the show all right so talking to lance at port this was after the rain out at the national open he told me that he saved the car for the national open so are you bringing the car you raced at port royal or are you bringing the car that you won the national open with so that that was cassidy's car yeah. the one that we ran at port royal so we ran that over the weekend at bridgeport and we saved the national open car to go to charlotte because 
we knew the competition would be, you know, naturally a lot tougher there and they get a lot more cars. So we planned it out that way with that car and that had our best motor in. Uh, so hopefully it'll, it'll help us somewhat, but you know, Cassidy's car actually working pretty good every time Lance ran it. But the, this other car that we won the national open does seem to be the best car we've had for probably five, six years. And, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get with them frames. Every, you know, everyone's different and it's not a negative on, on any of the sprint car chassis builders. It's just, just the way it is, you know, and somehow we got a, we got a good one. No doubt it is. It's one of those things. I've talked to a lot of drivers. I remember one time at PRI sitting there and Greg Hodnett is just breaking down every seam, every weld, every everything. And it's like, it made a lot of sense how sometimes they just feel better. And uh, and they do. We have talked, you have mentioned Cassidy multiple times. Your daughter, Cassidy, an aspiring race car driver, how is she doing? Racing-wise, I mean, it's probably been, well, she did get on the track. When was that? When the Modifieds were at Port Royal a couple of weeks ago. And right. that's the first she got on for two months because starting the end of August, when the All-Stars came in and from then on, Lance has been racing about every weekend and they've all been big races. So Cassidy hasn't run, hasn't run much. So we're going to let her run when we come back from Charlotte the following weekend. Uh, Fabs runs the last show of the year or so. Uh, she's going to run that instead of uh, instead of Lance, and so that she at least gets a gets a race in. But uh, I I mean she's done she did a lot better this year in the four tens. You know the first year in the four tens than what we expected, and I think even what what she expected. So uh, you know we need to get her on the on the track as much as we can. Um, a terrible dad. I know Lance said I'm not getting father of the year. So <laughs> I think he got out with his kid this year that he was saying over 40 times, you know, and Cassidy's only been out eight, 10 times, but you know, it, it's just what, that's what the, the time that we had, you know, we go out every weekend we can, but uh, you know, she's doing good. She's having fun. You know, she's still learning stuff about the car. She's good at, she's organizing this whole trip to Charlotte and, She's going through the trailer now and she's doing all that stuff. So if there's something there we don't have, she's not going to want to be around me though, because she's going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's it. That's funny. Donnie, talking about Cassidy, I was at the first race at her first 410 race at Port and you, you said it, she's done a great job this year. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Her first night out there. Has it been a huge transition for her going from the different car to the, to the 410? Honestly, it hasn't seen it hasn't seemed like it, you know, and I knew she was going to be like me in that respect. You know, if I they didn't have 305s naturally when I drove, but I'd probably suck in them because you kind of just hold it wide open all the way around where a 410, you know, you can't do that most of the time. You can earlier in the night, but most of the time you can. And especially at Port Royal, how that normally would get by the feature. So you can make up a lot of ground, you know, just by finessing it and, and hitting your marks right more than just everyone holding it wide open, like in a, you know, like in a 305. So I knew it would actually suit her, suit her better. And it did. Now, I, you know, I don't think she's not ready to run track record speeds at Port Royal or, or Williams Grove. But, you know, as soon as it slows down a little bit, you know, she's come from the back into the into the top ten multiple times, so uh, she's okay, and she just needs track time. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a fascinating journey that you guys are on with Lance and with Cassidy and with Davey and with Calvin and the whole crew. Neat, neat stuff, and we kind of love sitting back watching it. Ashley gets a good vantage point of it from up home. I get a chance to watch it a lot on pay per view, and Donnie, it's always a pleasure to watch what you guys do on the racetrack, and always a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for joining us here today on Wing Nation. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. There we go. The legend, the Hall of Famer, Don Kreitz Jr. joining us on the Hercules Tires Hotline. Stay with us more in just a moment. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. 
So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. The Hercules Star Hotline, Don Kreitz Jr., Ashley. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful guy. What a great story. I mean, it's just so good. It's awesome when we get up to the Speed Palace and have them on our show every year at the Weikert. Um, Just the whole team, great guys, just a whole lot of fun. And just they're in the right spot in their lives to just enjoy everything that's going on. And and joy and the effort they put into it, the value, and and it's just, it pays off. Hard work pays Mm -hmm. off and good things happen to good people. Yes. Both of those are things that we can say when we think about with Don Kreitz and that dream team. Um, going to be fun to uh, see what they do this week at the World Finals. All right, when we uh, before we got talking with Donnie, we went to a lap around the sprint car world. We made it turn one and turn two. Turn number three, last week we talked to Dominic Selzy, but it is the NARC King of the West uh, Fujitsu General Championship this weekend. It's past Saturday night. Shane Golubek picked up the win at Kern County, his third win of the season. But, Ashley, the season finale is this Saturday at the Stockton Dirt Track. Yes, uh, 20 races this season, 12 different tracks, three states, um, huge expansion north into uh, Washington and Oregon. So really cool what they're building with this series. Um, you mentioned it, Dominic Selzy. He chatted with us last week and told us, you know, he just has to qualify both nights and he's guaranteed in. So he's got one done. He's got one left to do to, to knock that championship. Yeah, and he didn't have really a good night at Kern County. He had a DNF, but uh, he does need to just start to get it. Looks like Willie Croft and Bud Kading are hoping to hang on to the spots. This race is the tribute to Gary Patterson. There are some characters in this sport that I wish I would have met. And I met some folks that fielded cars for Gary. They gave me, I have a GP hat in my, uh, in my, in my cubicle or my office back there. Gary was known as the preacher and this guy anywhere, anytime, anything. Love it. I, I just show up and race it. <laughs> and lost his life in 1983 at Calistoga. But uh, I just love that mindset of that racer. And I just think that that is so, so cool. So it's a tribute to Gary Patterson, all of the King of the West guys, and a, uh, and a ringer coming in, the North Pole Nightmare. <laughs> Yes. Bill Baylog looking to make his second start. He started years ago at a NARC race at Stockton, had a top five finish. He's looking to go back and do a little bit better. Love it. It's and he I'm sure he'll be successful. I'm sure he will be. <laughs> Bill Baylog, for God's sake. I mean, it's crazy how good that guy is. I mean, really, really cool stuff. Finally, turn number four. It is uh, that time of the year where we talk a lot about the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, and one of the things that they do as far as their charitable initiatives is a raffle, the sprint car raffle. This is the 14th time they've done this. I didn't realize that at all. 14 times they've done this. This year it is a triple X chassis Moyle racing engines. And Ashley, pretty reasonable if you want to go sprint car racing. <laughs> no doubt about <laughs> it. You know, they say you should start with $2 million and then you, yeah, you, know, yeah, you want to get a, a million in, in racing. racing. Yeah. Yes. But this one's only going to cost you $20, the bare minimum, <laughs> to get started. Um, for t- The tickets are $20 each, six for $100. And like you said, you can... All but go racing at this way. You just need a fire suit, a helmet, and Hansa. Right. Absolutely. You're good to go. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum is the beneficiary of that. And the drawing is on December 16th. So really, really neat. Really, really fun stuff, Ashley. And, you know, this season starting to wind down here. Now, World Finals this weekend. You guys had your modified race uh, down here at the dirt track this past weekend. Yeah, BAPS is running and King of the West is going to wrap it up. But, man, I'll tell you what. This this year has delivered so much really, really neat stuff. It really has been a fun year of sprint car it racing. It really has. I know the last two years we've talked about Mother Nature. We didn't really talk about her much this year. And that's a... Ode to her for standing back finally for a while. And I know I've mentioned this so many times. We just right now as sprint car fans, whether it's in the state of Pennsylvania or it's North Carolina or traveling the NASCAR tour as I do, we are spoiled rotten. Between Dirt Vision and Flow, the fact that we can sit, I can sit in a hotel room anywhere in America and see what's happening at Williams Grove or Port Royal or see what's happening out at Kern County with the King of the West Series really has been fun, and it really has drawn the sports together. So really, really fun stuff, great, great stuff. We're going to wrap it up with the World Finals this week. And uh, But, man, so good to have you in studio Thanks. with us here in North Carolina. Yes, it's always great to be here. Now that I, the child's getting older, maybe we can make it happen more often. There we go. Absolutely. <laughs> so fun, fun stuff for sure. Always fun. 
talking to Donnie Kreitz. That is for sure. We appreciate him joining us on the Hercules Terrorist Hotline. More important, though, than all of that, thank you for joining us here this week on Wing Nation. Wing Nation.